Uh, take the function f of x equals x cubed plus x squared minus 5x plus 3. This is just a good old polynomial function. Uh, how, will, how can we graph this function right here? Well, when it comes to polynomials, polynomials domain is always pretty easy. The domain of this function will always be all real numbers, negative infinity up to infinity. Uh, there's no situations where you can divide by zero, no square roots, no logarithms. Its domain will be all real numbers. <laughs> Um, intercepts are a little bit, it can be a little challenge at times, right? The y-intercept, like I said, it's not too difficult. The y-intercept, well, we just have to look at f of zero. And when it comes to a polynomial function, uh, the y-intercept is just going to be this constant right here. Because when you plug in zero, everything else will disappear. And so the y-intercept will just be that constant right there. So let's write it down for future reference. We get y equals three. Um, x-intercepts are going to be a little bit more challenging. Uh, because we have to solve the equation, like we said before, f of x equals 0. f of x equals 0. Now, for the most part, the homework is going to give you things that factor super easy um, without much difficulty to them whatsoever. Uh, this example right here is a little bit of a challenge. Um, it's not at all obvious how to factor this thing. Uh, there are some techniques, and I would recommend you go to the to the lecture notes if you want some more examples, or not more examples, but uh, if you want to see the details how one factors this thing, uh, please read these in the lecture notes here. Uh, but if one goes about factoring this thing, you see that it factors as x plus 3 and x minus 1 squared. So this tells us specifically that our x-intercepts are going to equal negative 3 and positive 1, all right? And our y-intercept here was 3. Now, I'll be honest, when it comes to James Stewart's list right here, I go out of order all the time. And so, honestly, I like to plot things along the way. Don't necessarily wait until the end. So we know that there's x-intercepts at negative 3 and 1. So let's actually put those. I have some grid, uh, some grid lines down here. So what did we figure out here? It was had an x-intercept at 1. So I'm going to draw the, a dot right here at 1. And it's a good idea to label your picture so it's clear to everyone what you have here. 1, 0. We had an x-intercept at 3, didn't we? Negative 3, I mean. So we get negative 3, 0. And then we also had a y-intercept. It was at 3. Get a picture like this. And then, so that's 3, 0, 3. All right. And so we'll come back to this in just a second. So we've plotted the x-intercepts and the y-intercept. So let's come back up to symmetry. Well, with our function, we can test for symmetry. You can take f of negative x there. Uh, but really, there's not going to be any symmetry for this function. Again, I often just skip this step personally. Um, if it doesn't become immediately obvious to me whether there's symmetry or not, I just kind of run away from symmetry. Sorry, uh, but it's reality. If you take f of negative x, that doesn't simplify to be f of x or negative f of x. In terms of discontinuities, well, it's a polynomial, so it's continuous right? Uh, there's really no issues to do with discontinuities here. Uh, things that we should look out for with discontinuities is going to be dividing by zero. That often gives us a discontinuity. Jump discontinuities will come about oftentimes from a, uh, a piecewise function. So not a lot to worry about there. Um, in behavior, well, when it comes to a polynomial function, the in behavior is determined entirely by the leading coefficient, or the leading term, I should say. Since you have this x cubed, as the leading term, as x goes to infinity, as x goes to infinity, you're going to get that x cubed approaches infinity as well. And as x approaches negative infinity, x cubed will approach negative infinity as well. And that's because odd powers will keep the sign. Uh, so if you go to negative infinity, odds will go to negative infinity. Even powers will always go to positive infinity. Um, and so for polynomials, you just have to look at the leading term there. All right, let, let's let's start now with our first derivative here. Now, unfortunately, we can't see the original function, so let me write it back on the screen for us right here. Uh, so our original function was x cubed plus x squared minus 5x plus 3. So this was the original function y. So as we calculate y prime, we can just use the usual power rule in which case we get very quickly y, a 3y squared 
plus 2x, oh, I'm sorry, why did I say y? 3x squared plus 2x minus 5. And as we want to find the critical numbers, we need to figure out what makes this thing go to zero. Um, this is a quadratic polynomial. This one takes a little bit more to factor. Again, you can use the quadratic formula. You can use some tech, uh, various techniques of factoring, like this factor factorization by groups applies right here. And I'm going to refer you to the lecture notes if you want to see some more details um, about this right here. And again, for anyone who's not sure, there is a link in the description of the video for the lecture notes uh, where you can get the script that I'm following right now. You can download it from my website. Uh, but if you factor this thing, you'll end up with x minus 1 and 3x plus 5, uh, which then tells us that our critical numbers are 1 and negative 5 thirds. Now, this might feel a little bit like deja vu, but it's like, wait a second. X equals 1. We saw that one before. It was an x-intercept. But it could be that an x-intercept is also a critical number, not a big deal. Now, at this moment, we could start to do the first derivative test to help us know whether these are extreme values, maxes, or mins. Um, but we're actually going to do the second derivative test in just a moment. Um, because we're going to calculate the second derivative. And therefore, we'll actually come back to these things uh, to determine whether they're max or min. Now, with respect to these points right here, we do want to graph these critical numbers, whatever they turn out to be maximum or minimum, uh, if it's a max or min, we want to graph them. So we are going to have to compute y equals f of 1. We already know that's 0. Uh, we also have to compute y equals f, or y equals f of negative 5 thirds. That one's not as obvious. Uh, you'll have to do a calculation there. It's going to turn out to be 256 divided by 27. Feel free to use a decimal uh, right here if you want to. And so before we go on, I do want to graph those critical points on the graph right there. We already had one x equals 1, right? That was one of them. Uh, so let's do the other one. The x coordinate was negative 5 thirds. Just so you know, negative 5 thirds is really close to negative 2. So we're going to draw a little bit to the right of negative 2. And then the 20, 256 over 27, that's a tiny bit bigger than 9. Uh, so we're going to draw that just about right here. This is our critical one. And again, label all the points. Negative 5 thirds, comma, 256 over 27 like so. And so already with these dots we have right here, we have some x-intercepts right here and right here. We have a point. Um, I'm already sort of believing that this, it seems very likely we have a local maximum right here. But again, we'll go through the whole the whole derivative test to make sure um, as we talk about the second derivative here. All right, so for the second derivative, we have to take the derivative now of the derivative. So y double prime is going to equal 6x plus 2. This should equal 0, for which you can divide everything by 2, because uh, 6 and 2 are both even. So we get 3x plus 1 equals 0, 3x equals negative 1, and then x equals negative 1 third. And so this right here represents our PPI. Uh, that is a potential point of inflection. Um, it could be an inflection point. We don't exactly know yet. Um, we're actually going to build our sign chart to help us with this information here. Now, in the meanwhile, we could we could start graphing this thing. Um, we have this x equals negative one third. It'll be useful to compute its y coordinate. When we're, you're looking for y coordinate, you're always going to put this back into the original function, the original function f of negative one third. Um, that one turns out to be one twenty eight over twenty seven, and we can graph that below. Negative one third, it's going to be to the left of the x-axis. And 128 over 27, that's just a little bit less than, um, a little bit less than 5. So you get a point about right here. All right? And also feel free to label it negative one third, comma, 128 over 27. All right. So we could try to connect the dots right here, but I do want to kind of uh, do our sign chart so we see exactly what's going on here. I'm going to put it right here uh, so there's some space. So when you're building your sign chart, what I want you to do is draw a line that kind of represents the x-axis. And I want you to do a mark for each and every critical number and PPI. So we had a critical number and negative 5 thirds. 
draw them in ascending order. We had a critic, uh, a PPI at negative one third. And then we had a final one at one, right? And consider what the second derivative does with these functions, at these values here. Now, negative one, so the, 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 the second derivative was a linear function, remember? We saw it above right here. It was 6x plus 2. And because it's a linear function with a positive slope of 6, it'll be increasing, increasing, increasing and uh, for always. It'll be below the x-axis until it hits its intercept, which is negative one-third, and then it'll be positive forever afterwards. All right? And so interpreting this right here, it will, we have negative, negative, positive, positive. So if we think about our critical numbers, um, because it's concave down, so it's going to be concave down at this interval right here. It's concave down at negative 5 thirds. That means you have a sad face. Oh, how, how sad that is. Uh, because it was concave down at a critical number. On the other hand, um, at x equals 1, it's concave up because we have these positive values right here. In which case, we draw a little happy face. He's so happy to see us. And so it's concave up. Um, and it's going to be positive right here, meaning that we have a local minimum at 1. We have a local maximum at negative 5 thirds. And if we think about what is the first derivative doing right here, if you have a local maximum, that means it was increasing, then decreasing, decreasing, and then increasing. And so we want to put all this together, right? Make sure we have all the appropriate behavior about monotonicity and concavity. So this point of inflection is going to happen at negative one-third. It's going to be increasing, de decreasing. I often like to draw the picture from the inflection point. So to the left of negative one-third, it should look like it's concave down. Uh, negative five-thirds is a local max. Whoops, kind of missed it there. Whoopsie-daisy. Um, also got a little extra inflection that I didn't need there. Let me try that again. So we're concave downward. You have a local maximum. Oh, I missed it again. Oh, well. So you can see the behavior here that it was increasing and then decreasing because we had a maximum and then it's concave downward in this region. Then when you're past negative one third, it should be concave up. You'll be decreasing until you hit one and then you can be increasing after that. All right. And so now we have a pretty good picture of our graph here, um, our polynomial. Now, what, I'm gonna, what I actually have on the next page is a computer-generated image of what we just created here. And you can see that, hey, I think I did pretty okay. Not the best draw I've ever done in the world. Certainly it's not the worst either. But we can see that behavior we were seeing before. We see that it was concave down right here. It was concave up right here. We found that point of inflection. It was increasing, decreasing, increasing, because we found this max and this min. And so we found all this information just from the formula. And so our graph is actually fairly accurate compared to what we had on the computer.